Hi everybody, my name is Chris Harris and I'm from AlloyTutors.com and welcome to this video on suggesting a mechanism RDS. Now RDS stands for Rate Determining Step. Um, so this video, no doubtedly, is going to include um, things to do with the rate determining step. Now, if you don't know what the rate determining step is or how it can be worked out from a multi-step reaction um, using the rate expression, then I suggest you look at the video that I've made um, and that will kind of explain it a little bit more than this one because I'm going to assume that you know really a little bit about RDS or rate determining step already. So if you're not sure, just click on the link below and you can have a look at that video there. Okay, so in this video, we're going to suggest a mechanism. This is quite tough, um, but it's a little bit like addition in math. So just make sure everything's there uh, and it all adds up, um, then you should get the right answer. So you can see here, I'm just gonna kind of talk you through some of the things that we may need to be able to um, answer this question properly. Okay, so we've got a rate expression. And so the rate expression basically tells us um, which reagents in a reaction have an effect on rate and by how much. So for example, this one is shown as the rate equals K, which is the rate constant, um, multiplied by N205. And this is the um, this has a first order effect because you can see um, we don't have a zero on there. We actually have um, a number that's not on there, but it's, it's effectively just a one that's put onto there. Okay. And the rate determining step, remember, is the slowest step in a multi-step reaction. Um, so that's very, very important. Um, and we're actually gonna identify it when we finish this as well. Um, and there's just a little bit of jargon busters, RDS is rate determining step. Okay, so we've got this reaction here, uh, and this is two lots of N2O5 will react, uh, so we will decompose, not react, because there's no addition there. So this effect is decomposing, it's breaking it down, to form four lots of NO2 and O2. Now you'd be given this in the exam, you'd be saying, right, here's the equation, and you'd be given this as well. Um, although you may be asked to work this out in a previous question, so make sure you look back uh, and check, but you can't work out the rate expression from the equation, we know that for certain, so you have to have one of them, okay? So you can see that um, uh, we're going to try and develop our um, uh, mechanism. Now for this one, there's actually two possible mechanisms for this, and either one will get the right marks. Um, we can't tell which one is which just by looking at this, um, but we can suggest it. That's why it says suggesting a mechanism rather than what is the mechanism. We're just giving it a, a potential mechanism. So let's start them first. So we know that, um, if you know from that video that I mentioned before, um, that um, the rate expression tells us um, what species are reacting in the rate determining step. So in the rate determining step, we know that we must only have one molecule of N2O5. If we add a little two here, then that would mean we must have two molecules of N2O5. If we add another reagent here, that tells us that we must have both of them reagents in the same ratio um, within that rate determining step. But in this one, it's pretty straightforward. Okay, so we're gonna start by, um, and we're gonna do this in um, black, I think. Yeah, we'll do this in black. You see here, we've got N2O5, we've already got that. We've got two molecules of it. Now, we must have a two-step mechanism at least, because it's multi-step. So from this, actually, we can say that we can just start with N2O5. And we can say that, that N2O5 has to decompose, it's not reacting with anything. Um, and if we have two of them there, then, well, that's it. That's all your reagents used up, so we can't just have that. So we must start with N2O5. Uh, and if we think about it, we've got to think of two molecules that would decompose to, uh, um, that would break down um, from N2O5. And one of them, uh, at least one of them anyway, one of the products must be a one up here. Now I'm gonna show you the first one. This is one here. We need a molecule of NO2. I can form a molecule of NO2 from this. So I'm gonna put that there. There you go, there's a molecule of NO2. And what's left is NO3. You can see we've got three oxygens left, if we take away this, and one nitrogen. So I'm gonna put NO3 there. Now what is important is that you must have one of your products here, must appear into one of the products here. Not all of them, you don't need all of them because we've got another reaction to go, but at least one of them. And you can see that we have got one there. NO3 doesn't appear in here. Now that's a really, really crucial thing, because actually if NO3 appears here, but not in the actual final product, that means that this is classed as an intermediate. This means that this will be used up in the next step. Now you can see here that we need another molecule of N2O5. You can see we've got one here, so we have to have another one here to make sure it adds up to two. That's very, very important. This is where the addition thing comes in. So we're gonna put N2O5 there, uh, and that has to react with this, because that doesn't exist um, in, the, in the product. So we're gonna put NO3 there. 
Now, when we react these two things together, um, we have to get products that add up to these here. Now, you can see here that we've got three more NO2s to come. So, we need to put three NO2 there. Um, and you can see that we've got an oxygen as well. And so we need an oxygen molecule on the right as well. Now you can see here, if we add these up, you can see that we've got NO2 and three NO2 there. They add up to four NO2, so that's fine. That adds up. And if you see here, we've got an oxygen here and we've got an oxygen here. That's fine. This NO3 is on there, but you can see it also appears down here. So effectively it's been formed and then it reacts again. So this is effectively being cancelled out. So that's good, because it means we don't need to actually include it. And you've got N205, we've got two of them, so that's fine. So actually all of this adds up to give our um, initial equation there. Okay, right, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna suggest the, another one as well, because you might, you might be alert, and you might have spotted another one in there. So we're gonna do exactly the same. Um, this time, we're gonna start with the same product. So I'm just gonna put Draw a dotted line there. Da, 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 there we go. Okay, so we've got N205. Okay, and there's our first one. Again, this will decompose, but this time the product's going to be slightly different. What we're going to form is NO2. We're going to put two NO2 there. Okay, and you can see here that we've got two nitrogens and two oxygens. Now, four of the oxygens have been used up, and we have an oxygen left over. But I'm going to put O2 there. And because we've only got one oxygen left over after we've used this, we have to put half in front of there. So that means half O2. Okay, so this is again another example of N2O5 decomposing, as long as the molecules add up on the left and you're not just making up molecules. Um, right, okay, so we've got that bit. But then what we have to do is obviously come to the second step. Now, again, just like in the first one, um, we have to have NO2 that's been, um, that's been used up here. So I'm just going to put N205, which goes there, okay? And again, we have O2, but we don't have half O2. So this molecule here is actually going to react with your N205, which is on the left-hand side here. So again, we've got two N205s, and the half O2 here is reacting with half O2 here. Remember, we need a full mole of O2, not just half, okay? Uh, so then once we've done that, then what we have to do, is obviously write our products. Um, this will decompose again. We need to have two lots of NO2 because two lots of NO2, two plus two, will add up to the four that we need up there. And I bet you can probably guess what the last bit is. Oxygen. We must have an oxygen molecule again to make sure this all adds up. The half O2 here, yes, is a product, but has to be used up here to allow you to form the full mole of O2, which appears there. Um, I suppose just a final thing is to identify the rate determining step, um, just very, very quickly. You can see here that um, this, we've got one molecule of N2O5 and nothing else, so that tells us that our rate determining step must only have one molecule of N2O5 in the reactant. So in this case, um, and if I do this in green, and um, this step is the rate determining step, RDS, because it only has one molecule of N2O5. It can't be step two because that's got an NO3 in there. And if NO3 was the rate determining step, or if that was part of it, you'd see NO3 appear on there as well. Uh, and in this one here, again, this is your rate determining step, the first step. Um, this one isn't because we've got an oxygen there as well. And um, if this was the rate determining step, you should see oxygen appear on that equation there. So yeah, there we go, it's quite tough. Um, you've got to, you know, you've, it is suggesting, so I suppose it's a bit open, you don't have a specific answer for this. Um, so um, yeah, make sure you're able to add them up, that's the crucial thing. Add them up a bit like a sum, um, a bit like addition, you know, in maths. So uh, add them up, make sure they, um, they work and they add up correctly, and you've got the right number of species on the right with the right number of species on the left, and don't be afraid to put in species that might not appear in your equation, um, as long as you use them up in the next equation, there's nothing wrong with that. So um, there we go. There's two examples of how you suggest a mechanism using the rate determining step. That's it. Bye-bye.